For as long as history has existed, people have struggled to move information from one place to another. When they finally got their data to its new location, it almost never mixed well, making the whole process useless. This resulted in two things that just don't go well together. What was the problem? Why won't the data mix? How will I ever know where data is supposed to go? How do I know where one piece of data ends and another piece of data begins? What the world needed was a universal way to move data and integrate it with other data in a nice, clean, easy to understand way. Aha! Some genius had the idea to create a file format that was very clear to define where one piece of data stopped and another begins. They decided to use the comma, and this was the very first comma separated values file that today we know and love as CSV files. So basically, a CSV file is a text file that keeps all the fields of data separated by a comma, like this. Each separated value is a separate data field. Each new line is a separate record. This makes it easy for the new system to read and understand what's going on. At least it would if the system the data was coming from only had three values, and the system the data was going to also had the same three values. But what happens when the two systems, the old and the new, are not identical? Maybe the old system is tracking a value the new system isn't tracking anymore. Or maybe the new system has new fields of data that didn't exist back in the old one. How does it know where to put the data correctly? To make things easy to ensure the right value goes in the right spot, we use the thing called a data map. Not as tricky as that one, our data map is really simple, and the use of data maps is universal, so almost every program that imports a CSV file knows what a data map is and where to begin. The first row in a data map tells the importing system where to store the incoming values. The data tell, the map tells the system importing the file that the elements in those columns should be deposited into specific fields. Let's look at something a little more complicated though. This is an example of a, what a product on our platform would look like when exported to a CSV file. This format with these fields in this order is how the incoming data needs to be structured if the merchant wants to upload all of his existing products onto the Shopify platform. In the second example, we see something different. Instead of having each single line represent a single product, it's very common for each Shopify product to get several lines worth of data on a CSV file. This is especially true for the requirement to have multiple images on a product. In that case, each photo gets its own line on the CSV file. Once the data is aligned in the CSV file correctly, the power of the CSV can be used. As you know, editing the description portion of a product can take a lot of work, especially using the Shopify interface. If you needed to edit a bunch of them, you would be at it forever because there's no bulk edit for descriptions. Exporting the product to a CSV file allows you to edit the descriptions in a spreadsheet where it's faster and easier to navigate from description field to description field. And that's basically the basics of understanding how CSVs work and what their background is. Our advanced troubleshooting cards in our support system and our support docs and the guru cards is very, very well written. Typically, spreadsheets are not all that complicated. Our biggest platform issues with the CSV imports is that the overall record count seems to cause issues. The larger CSVs need to be broken up into smaller record sets. Generally, anything under 2,000 lines will import without issues. Thanks for watching.